We have bought a 600 pound shed from Auto Alex and we've got 24 hours to get it through an MOT. A few months ago, Alex bought an entire barn of cars, which happened to include this little convertible MG. He knew exactly who to phone to flog it to. And 600 pounds later, it was mine. It then immediately stopped starting. And in the last video, we set about prepping it for an MOT at Tom Lenthal Limited. Can we get it back on the road or will this car dig its heels in? It's safe to say there was work to do. Everyone says that the MGF is a metro in reverse with subframes and everything. And Reese, you've just managed to get this ball joint out. And you're saying this ball joint setup here is not just metro, it goes all the way back to classic it's, mini. It's basically Austin. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, just the way that that ball joint is installed into there, it, it, you know, it, it's all the way back to Austin. So we're talking like um, 50s, yeah, 60s I mean, engineering. I mean, ball joints themselves have been around for decades sure. uh, and still being produced today for modern day vehicles. Uh, but this particular setup, the hubs, the way the ball joints are actually installed into the hubs is yeah. Metro, Mini, you know, it, it's all the way back to Austin. So what are you looking at with this ball joint that says that that is right. not good? Right, well this ball joint here, uh, when you've got the wheel on there and I'm going up and down, I can feel play in this ball joint. Okay. Uh, I got the apprentice to move it up and down as well and I put my hand onto it and I could feel it, but obviously just holding it in my hand, you can't actually tell about the play, but the only thing that I can notice whilst it's in my hand is the fact that I can move that ball joint with my pinky. Okay, and um, compared to say the brand new one, how yeah. does that move? Yeah, if we get the brand new one, I can't move it with my finger. Right. You know, it's nice and solid inside the ball. It takes a bit of force to actually move that one. And uh, why? Which is how it should be. And why is a duff ball joint an MOT failure? Uh, a duff ball joint. Uh, once the ball joint starts to get play and it's rattling around in its cup, you're actually creating more wear because the ball is actually slamming against the cup all the time, uh, which creates even more wear. And if it gets to a certain point, that ball joint will actually separate. And if that ball joint separates, uh, you could potentially lose your wheel, your hub. Uh, and or it could just like tuck under the car yeah, or something. Yeah, you go around the corner and that ball joint fails, uh, that wheel will come out like, yes. like the top of the wheel will come out. Uh, your drive shaft will pull out of the gearbox. Uh, and if you're doing speed, uh, that drive shaft is going to smash oh. everything up inside there. That's not good. Uh, you'll lose control of the car and potentially crash. Okay, let's replace those. Yeah, so for the sake of one small ball joint, uh, I think it's well worth changing. Okay, let's get the new <laughs> one in. Okay. One of the things the car was definitely going to fail on was its tires. They were all cracked and ruined. So we've got some fresh Nankangs on the rear. The fronts were okay, but you come around here. So we've got Nankangs on the rear. We've got Linglongs on the front. I have never heard of a Linglong tire, but there you go. We'll see how the rear axle feels compared to the front. These ones are actually okay. Should be good for an MOT. If you guys remember, about 10 minutes after Alex left us with the car, it stopped starting, but it turns out it was just an electrical connection. That's right, the connection's on the start mode, so the wires that go to it have just got a little bit of corrosion on them, so. Yeah, so like, the start motor is right down in there. That's it, right down there, yep. Uh, not the easiest one to get to, but it's doable. Okay, so we don't need any parts, it just needs cleaned up. Yeah, so I'll, t I'll uh, pull the wires off the back, uh, undo the main power wire as well. Uh, we'll get some scotch bright on them. I have a clever little device, a small little handheld sandblaster, okay. so I can clean up the inside. Uh, I like it. Yeah, and then we'll stick something on it to stop it corroding again. And then, what, after that, we've then got the front ball joints, the pads at the front, and then... Uh, discs and pads. Discs and pads. Yep. And then flying through an MOT. Should fly through an MOT, yeah. Okay, first things first, clean up those electrical connections, yeah? Yeah.
The MG has just been out for a quick test around the block, hence why it's soaking. But Tom, first of all, thank mm -hmm. you for having us. I realise right. this isn't exactly in the wheelhouse of Tom Lenthal. It's not our Limited. usual stuff. Uh, my main reason for helping you out with this was to get another piece of Alex junk out of my, uh, yeah. <laughs> out of my, out my yard. There must be, what, another three or four cars are sitting in Yeah, and then I've got a few more down the storage unit as well. Yeah, yeah. bless him, he's You're run out of space. You're a patient man. Uh, he, 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 he tests it, you know, <laughs> I'll give him that. You know, But yeah, no, we, we like to help him out. You do have a connection to these though. You used to be a legit mm. Rover mechanic, is that correct? Yeah, I did when I was doing classic cars on um, like full time when I was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to flip between doing the Jags and I used to work for an MG garage as well. We did a lot of midgets, MGBs, and these were part of that. I was in and around this product at, the, at that period in time. So you look at this and just pure nostalgia. Oh yeah, it comes really rubbing back straight things. away. Oh, my love might be a little bit, <laughs> a little bit strong. What do you <laughs> genuinely think of the MGF as a thing? As a thing, it, I'll be honest, it's not my cup of tea. Okay. Yeah, but. I think it's a really cool, I do think it's a really cool car. I love the concept of it because we've got the engine in the back. So on paper, everything should have been brilliant, you know, but typical Rover, they probably didn't invest enough money at the time. Mm -hmm. But what they, if they'd have made this car as good as uh, like an MX-5, for instance, do you know what I mean? They would have then, you know, and it's a shame. It's, I, always, I always look at some of the things with Rover and stuff like that and think, oh, I just missed it. Didn't quite get it 100%. Yeah, you know, but it's it's pretty. It's it's not it's not a bad car. Okay, well we're T minus an hour and a half until the MOT. T, yeah, exactly. So while we're waiting, show yep. me around Tom Lenthal Limited. This side of the workshops, yeah. classic, and this side of the workshops news. Yeah, so I don't know if we start from this end. So this is kind of the disassembly area yeah. and assembly area of units. So there are a couple of diffs that are just waiting to be tarted up a little bit, but they've all got Quaife units in them. They're actually going to your mates at Swallows. Uh, okay, well, yeah, this is it. <laughs> I feel like I'm slightly betraying my lads yeah, at Swallows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you race against them, right? Yeah, I Quite do, regularly. you know, but I've, you know, I've already sent Tom Robinson uh, a little message with a knife in his back, you know, I said, you might see <laughs> Well, that'll be me there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but these V12s, these, these V12s, look absolutely yeah. stunning. That is a 6.1 litre unit. So it's a 5.3 based engine. Um, but then we've put different liners in it, um, 96 mil pistons, and then all of the cylinder heads have been ported and polished and they've got bigger valves in them and stuff like that. So it's going to be really interesting to see what this one's going to put out. We're going to put it on fuel injection. And um, yeah, I think this is going to be an interesting power plant. But a lot of this work, it's not just a bit of sprucing. It is like oh, no, it's nut and bolt, detail. everything being beautifully cleaned yeah. down to this. Yeah, like, there's no... It's... Well, in actual fact, if you want me to build an engine, if I'm not doing it to that standard, I'm just not doing it. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so your standard's it. there and it's... Yeah, yeah, that's what we do and that's it. Okay. You know, and I, I can't turn them out any less than that, so... I mean, you've made Harry Metcalf's car sound... It's not quite Group C. But it's got that Jag V12 higher revving <laughs> yeah. note to it. This car over here ah. has got one nestled in. We've been staring at this the last couple of days. So that's a Series 2XJ. Uh, and with, that's got a six litre V12 in it with the inlet man with exactly the same manifold. So we're now calling it the HM spec. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, lots of people since Harry's been in here have uh, been going, right, I basically want what the Harry, Harry edition. The Harry, the <laughs> Harry spec uh, engine. It looks brand new, this car. Like yeah, underneath under, the yeah. suspension, everything is. So that's had a complete suspension overhaul. Uh, it's on an automatic gearbox and uh, and it's a six litre engine, but not the not like a five point three engine modified to six litre. It's a it's a five. It, it is actually a six litre engine from. So this would be nineteen ninety uh, nineteen ninety one nineteen ninety era engine. So do you want to have a quick look yeah, over the bonnet? Yeah, So this look isn't quite ready yet. Obviously, I haven't put the badges on there, but we've, we've based, this car is, we're just getting it ready for the dyno. So it does start and run. It's a little bit smoky at the moment because we haven't finished it yet, but we've done these. Again, I bought in these big intakes, so I've not tried these big intakes before, but because it was six litre, we wanted to give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we've not tried before. Um, this is a particularly nice example. It's only done, I think it's done about 45,000 miles, mm -hmm. uh, and it's already a really nice car, but all we're doing to it is just refining it 
um, putting, a, putting our handling kit on it, which is damper springs, um, adjustable springs on the rear. And you, you race an XGS. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I do race an XGS. In terms of upgrades and stuff, I imagine you're pretty well versed. I'm fairly, I'm fairly well up on the development of an XJS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is the suspension here, is this based off of stuff you race yeah, with? Yeah, yeah, I've got exactly the same coilovers on the back of my car, albeit the spring rates are different and the, the, the damping in the valve, the valve damping and stuff like that, you know, the valve rate. And, I didn't uh, realise they were twin. Yeah, yeah, all cool. uh, that came along with E-Type in 61. Right, okay. So that, this, this rear axle assembly, the, what Jaguar called the IRS, the Independent Rear Suspension Unit, ran from 61, came out with um, E-Type and then went all the way up to 1996 when they finally retired it when the, when the XJS was discontinued. And as, as a racing car, as a chassis, mm -hmm. Are they, are, are they worth it versus other cars? Because I, I, I've driven my dad's XGS mm. and it's, it's a boat, frankly. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, so what we're trying to do with, say, a car like this is we're trying to turn it into a stable, nice, fast road driving car. So they're quick, but just not quite as quick as swallows. So moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lovely E-type here. And am I right in saying, yeah. because it says Jaguar on the back, yeah. that means it's a Series 1? Mm. Have I completely dropped the ball there? No, not necessarily. So okay. it did go through um, you know, changes within the badges. Yes. Um, but if it says Jaguar, it means it's a 3.8. So the easy way. way to tell the difference between Series 1 and Series 2, Series 1, which is the most desirable, mm. yeah, has the lights above the bumper. Series 2, the lights drop down below. There you and go. that's the easiest and quickest way. Okay, shall we have a look outside? Because yeah. it's Jaguar heaven out there. there I already is... see a Mark I staring back at me. Mm. So your racing XGS is over there, but is this yep. the latest race car project? Yeah, yeah, this is... Uh, I've had to throw it out today to fit your Rover in, oh, so it's sorry. got wet. Sorry, <laughs> looks good though. It looks, looks good, good yeah. It's going to get wet anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so this is a uh, 1957 uh, Mark One Jag, which I'm Beautiful. getting built up and ready for running in um, the Jaguar Hawthorne series. Why Mark One instead of Mark Two? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, so Mark One was homologated lighter than a Mark Two, and oh. also a Mark One. Although it's a 3.4 engine, you're allowed to run triple carb, triple SUs. Whereas when a Mark Two was homologated. <clears throat> It was homologated, believe it or not, so they tell me, as a rally car. Wow, okay. A full weight rally car, so it's got to be heavier. It can run a 3.8 engine, uh, but it's only allowed to run uh, twin SUs. So I will take slightly less horsepower, um, but probably equally as good torque with the carbs um, and a lighter car. Very cool. So that's my reasoning for, so I've raced Mark IIs extensively. I've raced quite a few Mark 1s and given the choice, I'll take the Mark 1 and I just think they look pretty cool anyway and I just like them. Okay, so over there, yesterday, yep. I spotted what must be one of the most stunning DB7. So it's not just Jags, <laughs> it's kind of that whole family of cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like the DB7? I do like the DB7, my dad's always wanted one. It's, yeah. it's one of those cars I just look at and think, if someone said you need to be in Geneva tomorrow, Yeah. Oh, that, that, that would get you there, no problem. Oh. And, and you'll get out of the car at the end of the journey and feel, you know, you won't feel tired from driving it, that's for sure. So Beautiful. Yeah, so this is, um, yeah, this is also one of mine, Mike. Yeah, another yeah. TWR influenced as well. Is it TWR influenced? Yeah, so I've, I've always wanted one of those and I saw I, I got that about three or four years ago and I've had a bit of fun in it. I think it's, uh, we're probably going to move it on in the next... Um, Maybe move it on this summer and then we'll have some fun, find something else, have some fun with something okay. else. What's the better car, this or an X100 XKR? Uh, X100 XKR. Thank you. Moving yeah, on. It's a different car. This one has caught my eye. Again, a cracking colour. Ah, oh, the S-Type R. S-Type R. So my yeah. dad dailies one of these, but this one yeah. looks like an absolute minter. It's done about 125,000 miles now. Good. But if they were looked after, it's it's fine. Yeah. You know, and it, 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 this it's sort of an emerald green, is it? I can't actually remember what they call this colour, and it, with an ivory type interior. Out in the sun, this oh, this is a just stunning it, car. it changes colour. I've never seen one with this little wing. Yeah, is that that's yeah, yeah, no. or is that factory? No, it's factory. I'm sure okay. it's. You're missing a trick with this car because when this car came out, they Jaguar built it to take on the M5. 
which it did at the time when it came out had better power figures and yeah, better stats so like 400 than, horsepower 400 right? yeah, yeah yeah better stats than an m5 so it was it was an m5 beater and if you're going around a corner spiritedly this will go around a corner better than an xkr in standard format interesting because yeah. it is based on a lincoln yeah it's a lincoln what's mm. i've forgotten the name lincoln ls i think it's called yeah. um but no fair play jaguar mm. clearly engineered it properly I, I think a lot of people miss the miss the point of um fast jaguar four-door cars and i think the ultimate last hurrah of that in sort of like combustion engine format is the project eight yeah which is on my list you know i need to sell a couple of cars but i've um yeah i i think that uh, a project eight you know five litre supercharged with all the suspension tweaks they've done it and all the rest of it is just it is it is the pinnacle for me of uh jaguar's fast four-door saloons and yeah one day i'll hopefully get my hands on one okay so what do you reckon with our mg's mot do you reckon it's going to fly through uh i don't know because what you've got to remember is in the workshop we can do this that and the other we haven't got brake rollers but i think the brakes will be all right emissions i think it's going to be quite interesting okay you know because i don't think the car's done a lot of miles just give it an italian tune on uh, it's going to get an italian tune on the way down <laughs> Casey, we'll be, these lovely yeah yeah cold. we'd, we'd be They're mad really not that. to you know <laughs> get a bit of heat in that cat you know yeah, yeah, so exactly. you know so as long as um yeah as long as the emissions are okay and we um and everything's all all right on the brake rollers and i think yeah you'll be gonna be okay i think we're gonna get a ticket on it and you're gonna be driving it away it was then judgment hour for the MG. Would I get through an MOT test and would I be driving it home? Before we knew it, the car was back and the result was in. Tom, we have our sheet of paper. What does it say, Mike? It says... Pass. Excellent. Well done, I MG. knew it wouldn't let me down. Two advisories. Yeah, go on then, what you were we to got? guess what they are. I'm gonna say corroded suspension. You're right with corrosion, but it is subframe corroded, yeah. but not seriously weakened front. Um, yeah. Subframe corroded, but not seriously, seriously weakened, weakened rear. Rear. Yeah, so they those were natural subframes. They're are... a little bit corroded, aren't they? There's a bit of, there yeah, is yeah. definitely a bit of rust on there. It would benefit from being dropped out and powder coating, but you know. Okay, okay. We, wouldn't, uh, yeah, we weren't going to get that done this week. Well, I don't know whether Alex has revealed this to you yet. Mm. Do you know what we're doing with this in terms of money? No, I don't know what you're doing okay. in terms of money, no. Well, you're raising money for your friend and the charity r and yeah. your friend Emma. Yeah. So, Alex wanted £600 for this car. Right. And instead of me giving him £600, yeah. we're instead donating that to r and through, um, you've got Just Giving, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Link in the description to Tom's Just Giving. So, £600 really? going to that. And yeah. I've got a budget of 1500 quid. Yep. To get this car looking nice and cool. Yep. Any money we don't spend, yep. we'll also put into the Just Giving. So oh. we'll use all of our partners and have words here and there and hopefully spend as little money so that we can then funnel it into the charity. Oh, that's amazing. I, honestly, I wasn't really, I didn't really, I'm quite hot. Not like me to be lost for words, but <laughs> honestly, that, I, really, that is, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's really cool. But no, thank wow. you for allowing us to work on this car and it's I've really enjoyed it I've really enjoyed getting yeah. my hands dirty and your guys here have been absolutely top yeah top I think Reese has really enjoyed working with you guys exactly. so yeah no wow God, I'm a little bit speechless so I'm so I'm really it's grateful it's really cool all I ask is yes. that instead of Tom Lenthal Jaguar Land Rover specialist just yep. put slash MG Road <laughs> and then we're all good we're all good when we get a nice little side workshop you know maybe a bit I will more be space. here <laughs> most weeks yeah yeah we can certainly do then we need more space but yeah yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's something for the future maybe Wow, okay, look, I'm really, thank you so much. No worries at all. And guys, if you want to give some money to the RNLI on behalf of Tom's friend, Emma, there'll yeah. be a link in the description below. It's an amazing cause. Yeah, um, yeah Tom, anything to say about the charity and, and Emma? Yeah, it's just, yeah, so, oh, crumbs, yeah. As you know, and I've said a few times before now, uh, I lost a friend, I mean, literally, tail end of last year. He was an amazing person, a big influence on my life. Um, yeah, lifelong friends, and she was uh, a diver, done a lot of diving and uh, taught people to dive. Yeah. And so when she passed away, we thought we'd try and raise some money for charity. Um, so we've started a Facebook page, and I've dedicated one of my um, cars that I've built in her honour, and we are 
going to promote that and show it out over the year and I know you guys are going to show it out for me on, yeah, uh, on yeah. one of your channels. Alex and Harry are doing that. Alex and Harry and that. So it's, a, it's the red XJCR uh, resto mod car and we are going to sell that at the end of the year at the NEC in Birmingham at Iconic Auctions and every penny that car raises uh, in profit um, we are going to donate to the charity, the RNLI, and our goal is is to buy a big piece of seagoing equipment for the RNLI, or if we really hit the money targets, then um, they'll name a boat after her, which is what I'd so cool. really like to do. So if you go on to Instagram, it's Emma's Adventures uh, 1971, uh, and you'll find the details there about the Just Giving page and, you know, and what we're doing with that car. So if you can help and support, I'd really appreciate it. Cool, yeah, we'll put all the links to all of that in the description. Project MGR1 is underway. Yeah. This car is gonna be really cool once we're finished, I think. So again, thank you, Tom. And yeah, yeah we'll see you guys in the next video.